Go ahead and jump into it this morning. Uh, I'm going to pick up a little bit of uh, Genesis chapter 49, headed into 50. Um, some that that Kara did not cover yesterday because she was busy talking about the the 12 tribes. But uh, so we're actually going to start in Genesis 49, um, uh, verse 28. All right, you guys ready? You with me this morning? Let's do this. All these are the 12 tribes of Israel, and this is what their father said to them when he blessed them, giving each the blessing appropriate to him. Uh, verse 29, then he gave them these instructions. I am about to be gathered to my people. Bury me with my fathers in the cave in the field of Ephron, the Hittite, the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre in Canaan, where Ab which Abraham brought as a burial place from Ephron, bought as a burial place from Ephron the Hittite, along with the field. There Abraham and his wife Sarah were buried. There Isaac and his wife Rebekah were buried. And there I bury Leah. The field and the cave in it were bought from the Hittites. When Jacob had finished these instructions to his son, he drew up his feet into the bed, breathed his last, and was gathered to his people. Okay, let's jump into uh, to, uh, chapter 50. Joseph threw himself upon his father and wept over him and kissed him. Then Joseph directed the physicians in his service to embalm his father Israel. So the physicians embalmed him, taking a full 40 days, for that was the time required for embalming. And the Egyptians mourned for 70 days. When the days of mourning had passed, you know what? <clears throat> Let's go ahead and stop there. I want to. I want to go ahead and start talking about some of this stuff as as we go along. I'm I'm going to switch. I'm going to flip the script on you guys this morning, and we're going to talk about some of this stuff as we go along. Okay. So we've just seen that that uh, that uh, Joseph. I mean, uh, Jacob has breathed his last. He gave his last instructions. Hey. Guys, bury me where my fathers were buried, where his fathers were buried uh, back in uh, back in Canaan. Bury me there, and uh, and then it says he drew his feet up into his be uh, bed and died. Um, basically, the idea of that one <laughs> is that um, uh, there was a there was a, a drawing up a. Um, sort of a you know there's a there's a, a common english uh, uh phraseology for that you know to to shrivel or to um anyway it, basically what it is 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 jacob is feeling his last he kind of goes into a um he, he kind of curls up in himself and and breathes his last last and dies so it's um it it's just kind of a, another way of saying um he was reaching the end of his life he knew he was reaching the end of his life and he uh, he passed away. Okay, so so then Joseph shows his extreme love for his father. He throws himself on his father, and he kisses him and, and tells him goodbye. And then he directs them to embalm him, as is the uh, Egyptian custom. Now, I just want to mention this right here. Embalming is not a normal custom uh, in the in all of the world during this time especially not in the hebrew world this is an egyptian custom that's happening here so so this is the first time and and the embalming ceremony is uh it, yeah it, it says here it takes 40 days it's very intense i mean they basically like they start taking um guts Stay out now. yes and putting them in jars and stuff so so there's some serious okay. There's some, there's some serious uh, stuff going Can on. Can I bring here. up a really great point for sure. why he would have him involved, though? Sure. Welcome to the show, Kara. I'm sorry. I've been right over there. <laughs> I've been fixing the coffee and such. Um, there's a really great. There's a really great reason because he had to travel a long way to get yep. to Canaan in a really hot sun. Yep. And if the sun's really hot and there's decomposition happening, then other things take place. Right. And so um, it had to be taken care of. The Hebrews, as we see, even during the time of Jesus, <laughs> yes, it, it, it would become snake. I but hear the, that. I hear that. Like, <clears throat> if dead animals are left by the side of the road, like a big giant deer that's been hit, I hear it's, it will like it'll, it'll explode in the heat of the sun with all of the chemical processes going on. Good morning, so everyone. Like, so that's why I was saying lots eat, of things happen. If you're eating breakfast, you might want to stop. And, and, and all right, anyway. So anyway. But uh, but um, the Hebrew custom of embalming is actually to cover the outside of the body, to uh, to anoint it with oils, 
and and right. wrap it up in 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 sheets. We see this, of course, uh, from Lazarus. Lazarus and Jesus, Jesus, and yeah, all all of the customs that were handed down during this time period. So the Egyptians take out the guts, but the the uh, Hebrews they cover the outside of the body. It's probably due to religious idea of inside of the body, outside of the body cleanliness and, and that kind of thing because it's not very cleanly to handle guts. All right. <clears throat> so, uh, and then the e Egyptians mourned. It says they mourned for 70 days. It was probably due to the fact that Joseph was the one kind of turning them on to that. Um, he may have even paid them. Remember, during this time period, it is not uncustomary to pay mourners to mourn for a dead one. Literally to stand around and weep. Um, for the life of a, of a as if as if to be a <clears throat> cloud of witness as if to, as if to represent the cloud of witnesses that they have lived their life in front of yeah yeah so yeah I know it's interesting right okay all right so uh, here we are in 50 verse 4 when the days of mourning had passed Joseph said to Pharaoh's court I have found favor in your eyes speak to Pharaoh for me tell him my father made me swear an oath and uh, and said, I'm about to die. Bury me in the tomb I dug for myself in the land of Canaan. Now let me go up and bury my father, and I will return. Pharaoh said, Go up and bury your father, as he made you swear to do. So Joseph went up to bury his father. By the way, Egyptians uh, have the same kind of um, have the same kind of rules in terms of oaths. An oath was. I mean, let's put it this way. There there was no type of currency back then that could guarantee an exchange. So people had to be people of their word. Uh, an oath that was swore was usually swore before the gods. Mm. And, huh? It was usually swore before the gods. And the gods were the ones who would take vengeance if that oath was was broken according to the well, I mean according those were the Egyptians. The Egyptians. Um, God said the same same kind of thing. I will uphold all of those things that you uphold uh, to Abraham, and for those that do not uphold oaths with you, I will curse them. So, so the the idea was that that here you see, he said, I swore an oath, so I have to go do this, and of course Pharaoh's not going to get in the way of that because of his superstitious belief, and he says, Go, fine, do what you need to do. Um, of course, it's like the vice president taking a vacation, but um, because it takes a long way to get there and back. All right. So uh, verse seven. So Joseph went up to bury his father. All Pharaoh's officials accompanied him, the uh, dignitaries of his court and all the dignitaries of Egypt, besides all the members of Joseph's household and his brothers and those belonging to his father's household. Only their children and their flocks and herds were left in Goshen. Chariots and horsemen also went up with him. It was a very large company. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. And by the way, the I'm sure the Hebrew there, I haven't looked at it, but I'm sure the Hebrew there, it was a very large company. If it says very large, it probably means a large contingent. In Hebrew, it probably said a large contingent, a large contingent of people. So in other words, it's given that double... Uh, it was, it, this is very big. <clears throat> uh, verse 10, when they reached the threshing floor of Atad, or Atad, near the Jordan, they lamented loudly and bitterly. And there Joseph observed a seven day period of mourning for his father. When the Canaanites who lived there saw the mourning at the threshing floor of Atad, they said, the Egyptians are holding a solemn ceremony and mourning. And that is why the place near the Jordan is called Abel Mizraim. So, verse Very 12. Very interesting. Yeah. So they saw all the Egyptians out there. <laughs> they didn't see. I'm not sure they saw the, the Hebrews, but I'm, they saw a whole bunch of Egyptians. Um, verse 12. So Jacob's sons did as he commanded uh, them. They carried him to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave near the field of Mechpelah, near Mamre, where Abraham had bought, uh, which Abraham had bought as a burial place from Ephron the Hittite, along with the field. After, uh, after burying his father, Joseph returned to Egypt together with his brothers and all those who had gone with him to bury his father. By the way, I just realized something down here when they saw the contingent of, uh, of Egyptians. Realized that Abraham had said before, before he died that he had been in a fight with uh, some Canaanites that he had been to war with some Canaanites. Um, I wonder if God gave them the cover of the, of the Egyptians to be able to bury their father in peace, in peace 
Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, <coughs> verse 15. <coughs> when Joseph's brothers saw that their father were, were, was dead, sorry, it's, it's, a, it's a fun English <laughs> phraseology. When their father was dead, they said, what if Joseph holds a grudge against us and pays us back for all the wrongs we did him? So they sent word to Joseph saying, your father left these instructions before he died. This is what you are to say to Joseph. I ask you to forgive your brothers the sins and the wrongs they committed in treating you so badly. Now please forgive the sins of the servants of the God of your father. When their message came to him, Joseph wept. His brothers came and threw themselves down before him. We are your slaves, they said. But Joseph said to them, don't be afraid. I, I, am I in the place of God? You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good. To accomplish what, it, oh, what is now being done, the saving of many lives. So then, don't be afraid. I will provide for you and your children. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. Okay, so now Joseph has taken the place of Jacob. We see that Joseph has rightly inherited the place of Jacob in this, uh, in this situation. Um, he has, uh, because the favor has passed from Jacob on to Joseph now, Joseph is the head of the family. By, by throwing him in that pit. Well, we talked about this the other day. Jacob sort of had, I mean, Joseph sort of is material, has the material blessing of the birthright. Yes. Judah has the rulership blessing of the birthright. Right. But right now he is taking, <clears throat> he's taking point. But understand, understand that by throwing... <coughs> Okay, so I want to, I want you to get this trading birthright stuff, okay? So Jacob takes the birthright of Esau by offering him stew. Okay? Esau gets uh, Esau gives the birthright in that moment by throwing their brother into that pit. They ultimately gave away all collateral in the situation well, yeah. to be the head of the family. Well, right. Reuben, Reuben threw away his his um, his uh, right to claim spiritual leader material, you know, holder. Um, yeah, he gave away his authority in that moment. Yeah, because and then Joseph becomes exactly what it is that he prophesied that he would become. That he would become the uh, he would become those that the weaf, the shafts of wheat would would uh, bow down to. So what we see here is we see that the actions of individuals in these stories, the um, the wrong uh, the wrong steps that they take, actually wind up giving away the right of rulership that they are supposed to have, that they are rightly supposed to have according to family lines, and so God sets. God sets Joseph up in this moment not uh, not only to be the material giver, not only to be the one that says, well, "I'll I'll prepare for your families." Well, I'll he's take already care done of that. He's already did that. He'd already did that in Egypt. Exactly, know? exactly. But now everybody's looking to him. Every, every all eyes of his brothers are on him <coughs> and say, "Please forgive us. Please forgive us." Now I wonder why why Joseph wept here. What what do you think is the reason that Joseph wept? In the story when he got that message from his brothers. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it's a complex emotion. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> that we can boil it down into a simple explanation. You know, we, we do that a lot in the mornings. We do that a lot where we'll boil down, you know, these characters lives into this. These are one lump, this category here or this category here. And, um, you know, it's hard to do that for someone who's mourning. But I got to tell you, if I had my brother who I'd thrown into a pit and people under his command, many, many Egyptians under his command were surrounding us. Hardened warriors. Were surrounding us. I would look at him too. And I would think, and now he's got us here to throw us in this cave. Exactly. With our father, he's going to close this cave up. Dad's and gone. And we're done. Dad's gone and, and he's going to take his vengeance. <laughs> the time has come. <clears throat> but Joseph shows again his <clears throat> extreme character that he has that has been chiseled away in his soul uh, in this moment. Absolutely, 
And then, you know, something else I was going to say, and it just totally flew away from my brain. You know, there, there, is that, there is that moment when someone has severely wronged you, and you've been very uh, middle of the road about it. I mean, you, 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 you haven't, <laughs> you've let your aggravation show, obviously, but you haven't taken vengeance against that person. And so you tried to be as kind and as loving and as gentle as possible. And then there comes that moment where they say, please forgive me. And, and that's a relieving moment when, when, you are, when you are given the chance to pardon the sins of another, when they ask for your forgiveness, man, that's okay. Now, let me just say in our world, that is, that is a very, um, rare, that is a very rare thing for someone to ask for your forgiveness instead of expected or just understand, you know, we do have a a lot of assuming and understanding in our culture. I'm going to give you this winky face on this text message. I'm sending you wink, wink. I'm just going to understand that you got the implications of what my text message was and you know and not communicate with you straight out a lot of people don't even communicate uh, via phone call anymore there's just not a lot of express clear verbal communication anymore there's a lot of i'm just gonna you know they understand it well that's i mean that's that's a self-evident i mean i I want you to actually uh today i want you to thank several people and see (laughs) who actually says back to you you are welcome I mean, the the number has severely. It's either you know, yeah, sure, or yeah, sure. whatever, whatever, or no that biggie. kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, there there is this there is this place where where and we used to call it manners, but there is this place where you enter into a relationship contractual agreement that if I ask for forgiveness, that you will forgive me, and that if you have wronged me, that I will ask for forgiveness against you. This is kind of ranty. Is. I think it's very, I think it's very central to the story. But you know what? You asked me why did Joseph cry a minute ago? And you know, I would, I would cry if I'd lost that many years. You know, he lost a ton of years with his dad and with his, honestly, with his brothers. And he, he, he missed it, you know, And, and not by his own choosing. And so then Joseph's brothers bow down to him and basically say, we're your slaves. Yes. And Joseph says, no, we're not going to do that here. Um, uh, because I think his brothers were just trying to save their lives uh, at this point. Lots and, of Egyptians. Yeah, lots of Egyptians. <laughs> um, they're living basically in the enemy's camp. And, um, and he says, no, we're not going to do the slave thing. Yeah. Uh, trust me, I've gone that path and it's not pretty. So, so he says, you know what, what you, what you try to do against me, uh, God, God turned it around for good and reassure, I love this. And he reassured them and spoke kindly to them. So in other words, he's going, no guys, I love you. It's going to be okay. <laughs> All right. He's given the pep talk. All right. And let's end it off here. The death of Joseph. This is the final this is it, Kara. Brace yourselves. Brace yourselves. This is the another, final verse. Another Abrahamic Versus. another Abrahamic patriarch is. <laughs> is about to die. And we're moving into Exodus. All right, here we go. Joseph stayed in Egypt along with all his father's family. He lived 110 years. I love that. And saw the third generation of Ephraim's children. And the, the, wow. the children of Machir, son of Manasseh, were placed at birth on Joseph's knees. Which, by the way, is a uh, is a thing. Drummer. The Hebrew, yeah, Jermal. The the uh, the Hebrews would put their children on the patriarch's knees for them to bless them and love on them and that kind of thing. It was a, so he got to bless the second generation of Manasseh's, exactly. the third generation of Ephraim's. By the way, the the life expectancy of a slave not very good. Joseph lived 110 years, so. Just incredible. put that in perspective. That's incredible. Then Joseph said to his brothers, I'm about to die, but God will surely come to your aid and take you up out of this land he promised yes. you, uh, promised on oath to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Joseph made the sons of Israel swear an oath and said, God will surely come to your aid, and then you must carry my bones up from this place. So Joseph died at the age of 110, and after they embalmed him, he was placed in a coffin in Egypt. As sort of a placeholder for the people of God. Yep. You know, it's interesting that, that uh, <coughs> Joseph chose... It's interesting that Joseph chose not to be buried uh, in Canaan along with his 
father and the patriarchs. He, he, uh, instead, he was buried in Egypt. I'm, I'm guessing that that has to do with, um, with the fact that he is an Egyptian official. Like they might have even like built a pyramid around the guy. All right, so I mean, just just kind of put that into perspective. So, so the reality of uh, yeah, there may have been, you know, like there may have been a state funeral, so to speak. It was basically you know, in when, a sarcophagus when a Georgia Bureau of Investigation person dies. There's a state funeral. When the governor passes away, there's a state funeral. You know, and there may have been a state funeral. Yeah, maybe, maybe. All right, that's it, guys. That's all of Genesis. Well, we're not we're not done yet. I know. Are you we're ready gonna, to pray? No, yeah, I'm gonna pray. I'm just. I was. Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I was just kind of. Um, I was just saying that's it. It's the end of an era. We've <laughs> we've gone all the way through Genesis and. So I, I'm so, I'm excited. Anyway, let's pray. That's for after prayer. <laughs> That's for after prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. That, that you are, show us the yeah, way. Yeah, go ahead, babe. Thank you, Jesus, for your words. Thank you, Lord, that they are not just stories, that they are not just collections, that they mm. are real, that they are very real. The, these you, words Jesus. are very real. Now, Lord, today may they come free of the page and be imprinted on our hearts. Lord. May we be as gracious and as merciful, Lord, as Joseph was. Yeah. Lord, yeah. as we read these stories, we see your nature woven in and out of these passages. Lord, may we be as faithful as Jacob was. Yes. Lord, may we be as, as um, humble as those brothers were in that moment. Mm -hmm. Father, may we be as gracious and generous, Lord, even as the Pharaoh was, when he, um, all throughout the, the course of Joseph's servitude there in Egypt, Pharaoh was gracious to him, God, and that was by your hand, and that was because of your favor. So, Lord, may we um, may we have your favor. May we find your favor. And Lord, may we be gracious. Yes, Lord, Lord, your nature woven into these passages. God, may they be real to us. Yeah. And God, may they be more than just idealism. Yeah. But may they be, may help, may you help us to make them part of who we are. Thank By your Lord. Holy Spirit, work in us. Thank you, Jesus. Work in us, Lord Jesus. I pray that your nature would become ours. Mm -hmm. Lord, as, as these as we read these words and as we read these stories, Father, may we not just be checking off chapters, but God, may we be absorbing your word, yeah. absorbing your truth, and Lord, being transformed by your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you that you're chiseling away at <laughs> yes. us right now, Lord Jesus, that you are creating the character uh, inside of us right now, that Father... We're going through situations and, and uh, hard times that maybe you're leading us into the storm. <laughs> yes. Maybe you've got us by the hand leading us yep. into and through the storm to help us to be the people that you have called mm -hmm. for us to be. You, you have seen the character that we can have. And Lord, your desire is to get us to that place, to chisel away at the inside of us until we are the people that you have called us to be. We see that with, with Joseph, Lord Jesus, but you didn't leave, lead Joseph through the storm to leave him as is. You came and brought him out the other side, a yeah, prince of Egypt, thank Lord you, Jesus. Jesus. And so, Father, we thank you that, that we know that at the other end of the difficult situations that we are currently <laughs> facing, <laughs> that we are going to be a prince in your kingdom, Lord Jesus, that you are or calling us up, or princess, yes, yeah, sorry, a, ro a royalty in your kingdom, um, that you have called us to be royalty, Lord Jesus. You have called us to be a royal priesthood, a holy nation. And we thank you, Jesus, that you're accomplishing that even today, Lord Jesus, yes. even today. Yes. Today, Lord, we fix our eyes on you, the author and the perfecter of our faith. Yeah. Lord, I haven't <clears> been able to get away from this verse even and that just that that phrase that Paul said that you Jesus are the author and the finisher of our faith, and Lord, even throughout these stories, I see how you how you've authored each character and each component, each piece, and then as the story comes to a close, Lord, you have made you have you have tied that loose end together, mm -hmm. and Lord, today, Lord, it's not over for us. You are still perfecting us. You are still 
working on us. And so I praise you today, number one, that you're still working on us. Thank you, Jesus, that yeah. you haven't given up on us. Yeah. Thank you that you haven't walked away when we were unfaithful. That we haven't Thank sinned you. so much, Lord, that yes. you are you're, you turn your back on yes. us. Thank you that we're not done and damaged goods and yeah. useless. But Lord, that you continue to pursue us and Lord, you continue by your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, to make us into the person you want us to be. And Lord, thank you, Jesus, that it's not over. Yeah. Thank you that it's not over. Lord, if it's not done, Lord, you are not done perfecting it. And so, Lord, help us to remember in the difficulties of our day today, in the difficult situations of our life. Lord, we may be in a difficult season. Wherever my friends are today, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would remind each of us, Lord, that if it's not done and over, you are not finished perfecting it. And Lord, you concern yourself with that which concerns us because you love us and you're a good father. And so today, Lord, I thank you that our stories are not through. I thank you that we can live and breathe and have our being in you. Yeah. Lord, that we can find the truth of who you are in your word. And Father, we can we can live in the beauty and in the <laughs> glory of your presence. And God, thank you most of all that we can bring it to other people. God, that we can share it with other people. And thank you, Jesus, that uh, that you weren't done with the people of Israel. That, uh, that they are in a situation, Lord Jesus, where we're going to see in the next yes. chapter where a king comes along that, yes. that didn't know you. But, Father, that you were still with your people and you you heard their cries. And you are going to, as Joseph said, a deliverer will come to bring you up out of Egypt into the land of your fathers. Yes, yes. In Jesus' Jesus. name. Amen. So our son came in and is...